Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clarity 1593 Supportability Training. In this section, we will review several enhancements to road mapping. So what's new with roadmaps? We've got some really exciting things to talk about today. We're going to talk about five new improvements. First, the roadmap timeline has been refactored, incorporating that common timeline tool set, which offers from a roadmap perspective, the, an improved user experience for creating dependencies and overall roadmap item management. The roadmap scenario comparison capability has been reintroduced, providing that ability to visually compare roadmap items within two different scenarios. Uh, roadmaps now have the common blueprint tool set, providing that configuration capability uh, for properties, modules, channels, and actions. And then uh, roadmap and roadmap item attributes can now be secured using field level security. And roadmaps have that added capability to sync the roadmap item name with the name of a linked investment. So why is this important? So from the roadmap timeline perspective, in order to drive adoption, users expect the same easy to use tools and roadmaps that are available throughout Clarity, such as the task timeline. If you recall, we introduced the new task, lot, task timeline tool set in the last release, continue to make updates there, but now roadmaps have adopted that um, same tool set, which serves as a framework to further enhance the timeline view and include configuration capabilities for events, start and end dates, miles and milestone visuals. So it's, it's really setting the stage for what's next. Scenario comparisons were excluded from the prior release because the timeline was going through that transformation and it just didn't make sense to force fit the comparison capability into the release at that time. So scenario comparisons enable users to, to perform side-by-side -side comparisons of baseline plans against actual work in progress, as an example. From a blueprint perspective, customers' demand for the flexible channel capability resulted in it adding the entire blueprint, fra the, the blueprinting framework to roadmaps. So roadmaps provide the ability to communicate progress and channels are a key communication component. From the field level security perspective, again, in order to drive adoption, administrators require flexible tools to secure selective roadmap details to provide the end users with the right information at the right time. So synchronizing the roadmap item name with its linked investment name it is a feature request from the customer innovation program because when, pr when prioritizing and sequencing roadmap items, users expect to see the same naming conventions used in their linked investments. All right, so what's changed? <clears throat> Roadmaps have a new timeline view. All existing functionality remains in place, but the new timeline delivers an improved user experience for you know, moving roadmap items horizontally within a swim lane or vertically across swim lanes, creating and managing dependencies, and adjusting um, roadmap item start and end dates with an easy to use drag handle. There's also a new control to manage page real estate with a movable divider between the swim lane column and the timeline itself. Essentially, the roadmap timeline now has the same tool set used in the task timeline. Scenario comparisons are back, and I'll cover that in more detail next. So the roadmap scenario comparison capability has been reintroduced, I'm hearing claps, using the new roadmap timeline tool set. All the comparison capabilities that were present in 15.9.1 are available in 15.9.3. You know, key capabilities include the ability to compare one scenario to another, it's kind of obvious, uh, visual indicators representing data changes, swim lane changes, color by changes, date shifts, and the ability to drill into those change details. <clears throat> So 
So the, the 1593 uh, user experience to review scenario difference is, is different than 1591. A Delta icon is still available if there are differences between the roadmap items in the selected scenarios. And then scenario differences are now displayed in a details file other under a, a what is a new compare tab. In this example, all right, the plan of record scenario is positioned um, above the baseline scenario. So you see those two that are kind of nested there. Uh, plan of records on top, baseline is on the bottom. So if we look at the compare flyout, uh, looking at the start and finish dates between the two scenarios in the compare tab, it appears that those start and finish dates for automated security items were pulled in roughly, you know, 38 days, give or take a day there. But the overall costs went up significantly to, to, to do so. So as a reminder, the following items are used uh, to validate scenario differences. We talk about the roadmap item name change, any changes in start and finish that you can see here, uh, swim lane changes, color changes, and then metrics, you know, one, two, and three, right? You can, you can figure up to three metrics per roadmap item. And it looks like in this example here, we picked up capital costs, operating costs, and total costs, all of which went up uh, comparing the baseline to the plan of record. Oh, and another note, if a roadmap item doesn't exist in either the compare from or the compare to scenario, that details fly out you know, in the compare tab would simply state not in, you know, and then whatever the name of the scenario is. I'll show that in a second. Let's move on to blueprints. <clears throat> Customer demand for the roadmap channels actually resulted in delivering roadmap blueprints. So roadmap blueprinting and the property configuration capabilities are consistent with other parts of the application. So you can expect your users to quick, quickly pick it up and take, it, take advantage of it. Let's talk about module configuration. You know, out of the box, the properties and roadmap items are the available modules. Consistent with other parts of the application, up to 15 channels can be configured per roadmap blueprint. In the bottom left there, you're looking at an example of the runtime of the Power BI report configured as a channel. The upper right is showing, hey, I've got this other channel, uh, which will ultimately show up as a module in the roadmap instance. Let's talk about action configuration. The admin can link processes uh, with a roadmap blueprint. As discussed in yesterday's session, active processes are administered in Classic and can be, be linked to a roadmap blueprint, really any blueprint which was covered yesterday. With the configuration in place, the roadmap end user has an actions button on the corresponding roadmap page, properties page. So this is an example of a roadmap approval process that can be initiated by the end user. Again, I'm not gonna go into details about actions as the feature was covered yesterday, but I simply wanted to bring it to your attention in the context of roadmap blueprinting. Next, a roadmap and roadmap item attributes can be secured using field level security. Roadmap and roadmap item field level security applies only to the modern UX attributes, which are API enabled, consistent with other field level security capabilities. The administrator grants or revokes field access at the group level or simply suppresses a field altogether. Administrators have an added capability here in the attribute area to modify out of the box custom field names, but that topic is going to be covered tomorrow in another section. Finally, when prioritizing or sequencing roadmap items, users expect to see the name, same naming conventions in place for linked investments. This feature was requested as part of the uh, customer innovation program. So the ability to sync roadmap item name with the name of a linked investment is now available in this release. You can see here in the other section, the sync, uh, in the sync leaked item pop-up, there is a roadmap item entry, which is really for the name. Uh, and that's checkbox as part of this other section. All right, so let's get into the demo. We'll talk about um, 
uh, creating dependencies. We'll take a look at that. We'll um, use the roadmap scenario comparison capability. We'll take a look at the blueprinting capability, field level security, and ultimately syncing the roadmap item name with an investment name. Okay, let me bring up the product and we'll get out of PowerPoint. And we'll come over to the app. And I'll start here on the roadmap list view. So as I mentioned, we're gonna review five capabilities starting with the uh, usability improvements that come with this new roadmap timeline view. I'm gonna click on my organization strategy roadmap. I'll close out this thing. <clears throat> All right, so I'm in my current scenario, current plan scenario and I'm using my executive view. Good. So I wanna draw your attention to the uh, compare scenario button. Uh, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. So as I mentioned, this roadmap timeline has been refactored to incorporate the same tool set used in the task timeline. It provides the same easy to use capabilities to move a roadmap item or extend its duration or pull in its start date. I'm gonna take it this uh, release 6.0 here. I'm kind of gonna extend its duration one month. I just grabbed this drag handle here and I'll go March 26, I think. So that's how simple it is now to move those things around. I can just pull it back and put it back to where it was. Um, I'm going to grab um, the 4.0 release and just kind of move that whole thing. It starts October. I'm just going to move it out a month to November, right? It's very easy to just drag those things, move them around back and forth. Um, you're also seeing the dependency lines here. The, the the user experience and configure dependencies is much simpler in this release. For example, I'm going to take credit card. You see the dot that shows up there on every one of these guys. That's my indicator. I just grab a dependency and I can just drag it down. And you can see the the line as I hover. So it's it's a smooth curved line. I can just click and hit delete. Um, but you're seeing those curved lines, which makes it a lot easier to see. Um, you know, the dependencies compared to that kind of right angle uh, line, which got a little confusing in some cases if you had a had a messy uh, view or complex view, I should say. So I'm going to show you the, um, the show dependencies option is still the same. I can select or deselect and you see those lines disappearing in the background. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is the creating of a new roadmap item. I just, in this case, um, I'll just go right here. I'll just click and drag. I don't have to click a plus button anymore. Um, that is just done directly with the mouse and um, uh, going directly from there. So that's super easy. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and so I'll close that down. So there's, one more thing I wanted to draw your attention to was that movable divider line, right? I'm over here on the left-hand side. I can expand, collapse that, depending on, you know, my the names of my um, swim lanes or the names of the attributes that I've used, I may want to expand or collapse the, the real estate here. Uh, FYI, there's no movable line between swim lanes at this point to, you know, add space or remove space, that's all dynamically created based on the number of um, at, uh, roadmap items you've got in play here. So let me, uh, that kind of wraps up the demo of the improved roadmap timeline. Let's get on to uh, roadmap um, scenario comparisons. All right, so I'm, I'm really happy to be able to walk through this comparison with you today. It's being reintroduced. As I mentioned, it was excluded last go around because this view was going through a refactoring effort. So for this timeline, you can see I've got um, a, a current plan and a baseline that are here. So I only have two scenarios. Um, and the uh, if I toggle between the two, I'll go back to baseline. You can see some subtle movements, right? Between the baseline and the current plan. But so let's dig into the details to figure out what the differences are. I'm gonna go ahead and click the compare scenarios. 
it brings up this compare to banner with baseline. Of course, if I had multiple scenarios, I could go ahead and pick uh, whichever one I wanted to have in the compare to line. As you can see, the um, if I click on a, um, a collection here, I've got the compare to is lightly shaded below the compare from. So in other words, baseline is on the bottom in the shaded area and um, the current plan is on the top in a more kind of prominent fashion. Um, so uh, the other thing is, so you've got that visual cue immediately about date shifting. It looks like uh, the general theme between these two was kind of a shift right <laughs> compared to current plan compared to baseline. Um, as you can see, there's a delta icon that's also available to help you visually determine that there's um, some uh, uh, changes that you may want to look into. So I'm going to click on the credit card collection. I'm going to select my details flyout, and you can see my compare um, a tab that shows me that you know things have moved out roughly 50 days, and I've seen uh, an increase in these various cost metrics, you know, rather significant increases as well. So that's collecting you know date shift and some metric changes. Um, no, in the prior release, this was, was this type of information was presented in a pop up. So this is a much improved user experience to view scenario difference details. Um, now, the other thing with this flyout open, I'm going to go ahead and click on digital. Um, my digital experience, I'll click on that one. And this one is interesting because. I got an indication that in my baseline it was on hold, and it um, in the current plan it went to pending approval. So this is an example of a swim lane change, and you know coincidentally you can also see that this thing um, was delayed by roughly or shifted out roughly 35 days. Um, last example with the flyout open, I'm going to click on Omni Channel. And this one just tells you straight away, hey, this wasn't even in baseline. So this represents, you know, net new work that was added to the current plan. So as a reminder, um, the scenario comparisons that are being validated are the name, start and finish dates, as you've seen. We saw a swim lane example. It's also capturing color changes. And you saw in this example, the, the metrics one, two, and three that are at least configured here are, are showing that. So I'm going to go ahead and close the dialog here. I'm going to close this guy to come to wrap up the demonstration on roadmap scenario comparisons. So let's move on to blueprints. So uh, roadmaps have been, been have incorporated that same um, blueprinting tool set that's provided pretty much everywhere else in the application. And while we're here on the timeline view, you can see the tabs up top. Uh, roadmap items is selected, which gives us access to, you know, the timeline, board, and grid views, right? Um, prop, I'll select properties, which provides those roadmap item details that have been configured from the blueprint. Again, field layout and section definition are controlled by blueprint functionality. Nothing really new to show here, but I do want to call your attention to the actions pull down. Um, as I mentioned, you can, these are um, processes now that are exposed to the end user. I've got two examples here, right? One is a roadmap approval process that's going to update the status over here on the right. It's going to update the status from um, draft to approved to published upon approval. And then the second one, that roadmap CIT update is an example of once this roadmap goes to published, it's going to go ahead and update any uh, linked um, CITs with uh, those updated details once it changed to published. So I'm going to go ahead and select the um, approval process one. You can see that there's a, a, move, a message there telling you that it's going to get started. I'll go ahead and click over to the executive performance channel. Um, this is an example of a punch out to a Power BI report. Right, in the context of this roadmap. Um, 
So that's uh, an example of one channel that's been um, put in place here. You could have, of course, up to 15 uh, that you want. I'll go back to the properties tab. We should see the end result of that um, process converting this from a draft status to a published status. So that's cool that that worked successfully. Let's take a step back to review the blueprint itself. So I'm going to come over here to administration. Uh, blueprints, and I'm going to do a roadmap. <clears throat> Here's my organizational roadmap, and I'm going to go into edit mode to, um, to do just that to turn on the edit capabilities. So, as I mentioned, the property pages are, um, you know, it's very consistent or are cons exactly consistent with other parts of the application. So, really, nothing new to point out here. I'll hit modules and out of the box, we've got properties and roadmap items are the two modules that are there. Um, I've added the executive performance as we showed in the actual roadmap instance. So I'll click on that and you can see, um, you know, this behavior here to name it and put in the appropriate URL. You can preview it. So that's very consistent with other parts of the application. Um, I, now there's a new tab here on all roadmap. I'm sorry, on all blueprints in terms of actions. So here's the existing um, actions that were there visible over on that on that roadmap. To add a process, you simply click the button, and this presents you with all of the um, object, uh, all the available object or non-object related processes. So I'll click close. And um, I'll exit edit to come back to the list of blueprints and to conclude the demo of roadmap blueprints. So let's move on to roadmap security. While I'm in um, the administration area, I'll come back to administration and I'll click on attributes. And I'm going to select an object here. I'll get rid of team, roadmap, and roadmap item. So you can see a few of roadmap attributes have been secured. Edit access has been provided to the app administrator group. Uh, view access has been provided for a couple of attributes to the modern UX PML group. So let's see this in action. So um, I'm going to go select roadmaps over here and on my list of roadmaps and you can see i'm in my roadmap list view i've got about uh, i think 10 attributes are configured here and you can see the shield is showing up on several of these one two three four five um now i'm a member of the uh, app admin group i have edit rights to these fields I can go ahead and fix the type here. That's supposed to be a product. I know that that's what it's supposed to be. So I have, you can see I have edit rights to these guys. I can change the, the security here from, you know, the organizational security or department OBS. I can change any of these things. So as a member of that access group with edit privileges, I can do just that. So let's um, take a look at this from a, another user's perspective. I'm going to log out. And I'm gonna log back in as Cheryl Amos. And I'm gonna go to my roadmap list. And there's a fewer uh, items here for me to see in my list view. I do see category and executive. The other three, four items have just been eliminated from the view. And I only have access right to these. I mean, view, I'm sorry, view rights to these executive pull down or the category pull down, I cannot edit those. So as you can see, I only have few access to these fields and cannot make any changes. So that concludes the demo of field level security uh, as it pertains to roadmaps, roadmaps um, and roadmap item attributes. So let's move on to synchronizing the data with linked investments. So um, I need to log out as Cheryl and come back in as Ian. Oops. 
Okay. Um, I'll select the roadmaps uh, thing. I'll go back into my organizational strategy uh, roadmap. Oh, actually, let's see. Yeah, I wanted to go here. And um, I'm going to look at my ARD payments roadmap item here. I'm going to open up the flyout. And you can see it's linked to has a different name. So it looks like the owner of this uh, investment <coughs> was making some edits. And, you know, typically as a user here in the roadmap area, when I'm sequencing these things, I certainly would expect to see these names be have these roadmap item names be the same as their underlying investment. So in order to resolve that, I'm going to go ahead and click sync linked items. I'm getting my pop up here. I don't want to sync everything. I'll just select the roadmap item name. That's the new entry here. And I'll click sync. I am going to get an error map or sorry, a, a message, a banner that tells me this is locked. It's doing some work. You know, I can navigate over to the board view while this is going on. I can come over to the grid and perform any other actions that I want to um, to work on any roadmap items if I wanted to review them. But I'm going to come back to my timeline and I can see that this roadmap item has now been updated. So that just took a little while, but that was just an example of one. But the point was to just show you that that sync capability is now in place for this particular release. So that concludes the demo of synchronizing roadmap by the mains with linked investments. And that also concludes the demo of the roadmap updates of the new timeline, scenario comparisons, roadmap blueprinting capability, and field level security. Great, this concludes the roadmap updates section.